No, brother Gerald. There's a long way for Brandon to go first. Last Saturday, up to Annick, almost on the Scottish border, for the first qualifying round, with the tail end of the cricket season still wagging. Annick CC in the whites, Annick FC in the stripes. Brandon had scored six goals in a midweek league game, but they weren't expecting this one to be easy. We've had some good results, and obviously Annick have, uh, are aware of that. Um, they were first division side last year, so uh, I'm hoping really that it will be a good game. A bit more wind out today, so it's a little bit more of a lottery, but nevertheless, it'll still be a good one. It wasn't easy, and it got harder. When a steady drizzle set in to make the surface greasy, David Martin was pleased to have Neil Mountchell's safe hands to cover his slip. An anxious moment, too, for the Martin family who travelled up from Liverpool. But it was David's interception that led to Brandon's best chance of the first half. Richard Bancroft's pass, and Darren Palmer completely fooled Tony Glass in the Annick goal, only for the ball to hit both posts. A deep sense of foreboding was setting in for Brandon. Caught up field for a free kick, with no reprieve from an offside flag, they left John Mosscrop with a clear run on goal. No argument about the penalty, nor about referee Jeff Winter's decision that there was no call for a red card. Mosscrop himself took the kick. Annick won, Brandon United nil. Just under half an hour left. And less than five minutes when Alan Lamb tucked away the equaliser. Alan nearly made the grade as a youngster with Nottingham Forest, but at 21, he still has time on his side. At the end, one goal apiece. And that wasn't the only inconclusive result in Annick on the day. Frustration for cricketers and footballers alike. But any disappointment David Martin may have felt was unlikely to last. Alvin had come in from the match face down here and we lost. David had come in full of smiles and Dad had say, what was the result? And he said, we got beat 10-0. It was a good game. <laughs> <laughs> so will he be back for the replay? Oh, yes, we'll be back Wednesday. Yeah. Two pounds for adults, half price for juveniles and senior citizens. Wembley, it certainly wasn't. But the FA Cup, it unquestionably was. Replay that crackled with commitment from first touch to last tackle. A prize for the winners, an away tie against Gateshead. Defences were tight, chances fleeting. 20 minutes before half time, this corner came out to Brandon's right back, Darren Bruis. A new signing this season, he was denied his first goal for the club only by inches. Annick played with five at the back and organised them well. They knew they wouldn't have many chances, but when this one came, Stephen Muller drifted the ball precisely out of the goalkeeper's reach. Just on half-time, Darren Palmer was given room to show his skill, only to see it matched by Tony Glass's two-armed stretch. The second half matched the first. Brandon pressed, Annick built confidence out of discipline, until, with only seconds left, the ball dropped to Brandon's Barry Wilson. No more chances, Brandon's cup run was over, so was the Martin family fantasy. So what now, go and ring Alvin and explain how he got away? Well, he, he said to me this morning on the phone, he said, uh, you know, you've got to win tonight. He said, do you think you'll do it? And, you know, obviously keep him tight-lipped about it, but, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, tell him, I'll tell him how it went, but uh, I don't think he'll believe it.